Ryan! Hey team, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. So this time we're talking about training. And in my opinion, I think training, firearm training, is probably one of the most um, important aspects of firearm ownership. And that's a question I'd like to pitch to you guys right off the bat is, as far as training goes, what training have you done? Uh, is it just been you know, relegated to the military or law enforcement, or have you gone and sought other training as well? And then where is it in the priority for you as far as firearm ownership goes? Is it really high or is it really low? And why, why is it that way? So obviously this time we're talking about firearms training here. Recently, I was able to attend fighting rifle with tactical response and I wanted to do a video for you guys just to kind of give you a brief overview of kind of what to expect uh, from tactical response and, and their fighting rifle course, but also kind of some of my takeaways and some things that I may have done differently prior to going to the course. So we're gonna get into it. I've got my notes right here, so I'll be reading from those. I <laughs> have a lot of information to cover. But before we get into the actual video, I do wanna share one aspect of my trip to Camden, Tennessee. Naturally, you guys may already know, if you've been with the channel for a period of time, that uh, I have a bit of a relationship with uh, James Yeager and the fact that I met him at SHOT Show last year. And since then, I have come to know James uh, fairly well. I have his phone number, so if I ever need to call him, I can do that if, if, I, if I need to. I try not to, but uh, if I do need his advice on something, I have the ability to reach out to him. I've seen him um, do some pretty awesome things for other people, and he's just a honest dude. So uh, when I asked him if uh, there was a chance for me to come out and take Fighting Rifle, his one-word response was, return and that's something I really do appreciate. Now I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad or indifferent about this course. I just wanted to provide you a overview of what to expect, what it was all about and let you guys make the decision. But what I can tell you is from my experience from last year of taking Fighting Pistol and then this year with Fighting Rifle, this is probably one of the best um, courses that I've been through, uh, through all the different training that I've taken. So let's get into it. Day one starts um, bright and early at Tactical Responses shop. Uh, you'll go in, you'll meet the instructors. We had Don and Tim were our instructors for both days, and I've already worked with Tim. This was my first opportunity to work with Don, and, and I just, they're, they're great guys. They're really good instructors, and uh, they're very, very, very knowledgeable, have a, a, a very steep background in, um, you know, using firearms and being on the sending and receiving end of, of bullets being shot at them. So after you get introduced to the instructors, then you will go around the horn and all the students will introduce themselves as well. And that's something I really like because I like to know the background of the individuals that I'm training with as well. And we had an eclectic group. We had civilians, we had law enforcement, we had active duty, um, military personnel there as well. One person is actually on their way to a combat zone here very soon. So that was really cool to see a young soldier, you know, just really interested in improving their skills as well. So once we get done with that, we pile into their vehicles and then head out to the range, about a 10 minute drive from tactical response to get to the range. We get there, we get set up, we get all ready to go. And as soon as the instructors are ready, it is full wide open the entire time. For the rest of the day and the next day, it's going to be a, uh, <laughs> an onslaught of information, if you will. So the first thing to expect is just to um, rehash. If you've taken fighting pistol or another defensive pistol course, uh, they will rehash the proper way to um, draw your sidearm your pistol uh, by the numbers. So one is going to be getting a good solid grip on your pistol, two is bringing it up, three is presenting it, 
and starting to align your sights and then four is to fire on your target so that's something that i really enjoyed in in the fact of kind of rehashing some of that kind of uh, reviewing some of that uh, and then they get right into the rifle so you'll spend maybe 20 minutes on if if that if 20 minutes on drawing your pistol and then it's right into the rifle and the very first thing that they talk about is something that i really did appreciate it, and that is height over bore when it comes to your sights or your optic regardless if you're running iron sights or uh, a red dot or whatever they put you through a drill to show you exactly what it looks like to line up your sights at a very close target and to fire and see the difference. Sometimes it could be anywhere from two to three inches in difference between what you're seeing and where that round's going. And that's something that I was aware of, but to actually see it in practice and see them talk about it, I really did appreciate it. The next thing they'll get into is going to be transitions. So, you know, firing with your rifle and you're at bad breath distance is kind of the way they say it. But if you're in a, in a situation where you're using your rifle, bad breath distance, you're firing and something goes wrong, it is quicker for you to transition to your pistol than it would be to correct that malfunction or reload. So they talk about that and the best way to transition and get to your pistol and employ that as quickly as possible. Now, one of the interesting things about day one is the fact that uh, you're not going to do anything other than the individual aspect of manipulating and firing your rifle. So there's not going to be any concern about uh, having to work with anyone. This is all about focusing on the individual and ensuring that you have good solid foundations in employing and manipulating your rifle. Day two, you'll get into teamwork, but day one is all about individual uh, manipulations. And one of the things that I liked about uh, day one is the fact that we didn't just shoot from the standing or kneeling position. We actually got into very uncomfortable uh, positions to shoot from. And that was from the supine position where you're laying on your back and you're firing up at a target, which I really did appreciate because you don't necessarily get the opportunity to shoot in those positions. Uh, shooting from your left side and your right side and how to not only control your weapon but also get a really good sight picture as well. And then the next three aspects that they talk about and this is going to be in the second half of day one is going to be moving and ensuring how to understand turning towards a target regardless if that is sideways and turning towards the target or turning completely around 180 degrees to engage a target. That also means moving towards a target, moving back from a target, and then also the lateral movement as well, uh, engaging targets. Uh, and that was a really good uh, eye-opener as far as my ability to shoot on the move. Okay, so day two is going to start off right at the range. You don't stop at tactical response like you did on day one. You're gonna go straight to the range. And as soon as you get ready to go, geared up, however you decide to be geared up, um, then they're going to put you into what they call a cold start drill. And that was actually one of the best drills that I absolutely loved uh, because to be frankly honest with you, I failed it. I failed the drill. The drill is uh, nothing more than you get at bad breath distance from your target, um, three, five yards, something like that. And uh, you are facing a perpetrator, a bad guy who has your most cherished loved one uh, hostage. And the point of the drill is to bring some realism to it uh, to ensure that you are focused on exactly what you're needing to do. From there, you're going to get into a number of different drills uh, that is going to be partner led. Uh, so what I mean by that is you and a partner are going to do leapfrog drills where you're going from one piece of cover to another piece of cover uh, in a lateral movement. And then you also have bounding as well. So bounding is going to be your forward and back movements. Leapfrog is going to be your left and right. And we did a number of different drills to reinforce not only your ability to move from cover to cover <coughs> or concealment, uh, but you're, you're always going to be wanting to look for cover. Um, 
but you're not only working with getting to cover, but you're also working communication with your partner, ensuring that uh, you're covering their move and, and making sure that uh, obviously you're topped off, ready to cover your partner as they're moving and vice versa and all that jazz. So that was a, uh, a really good um, segment of the training and that's what we mainly concentrated on on day two. Day two was all about teamwork, communication, ensuring that you and your partner understood the types of communication that you're going to be using, uh, the words that you're going to be using, whatever the case may be, and then also ensuring that you have a dynamic between the both of you to allow you to know when is going to be the best opportune time for you to reload and you to get ready and for your partner. Make sure that your cyclic rate of fire is such to ensure that I have enough time to get myself back into the fight and also learning how to give my partner enough time to get him back into the fight. Let's get into some of the takeaways that I had from this course. So there's a number of different takeaways that I have from this course, and, and I don't have time to discuss all of them, but the, the number one item on the packing list for tactical response was an open mind. And I really, really encourage you guys to come to class with an open mind. Regardless if you have training previously, uh, or you, you have some training with you know, the military or law enforcement, whatever the case may be, Come ready to learn, come ready to write down notes, uh, come ready to listen to what they have to, the instructors have to say. And you know what? At the end of the day, this is just a method of, you know, how they do things. And if it's not something that you necessarily agree with, you know what? It doesn't matter because you're still learning, right? You're learning a different way of doing things. And number two is I was <laughs> in Camden, Tennessee, the first weekend of June, and it was scorching hot for someone who came from um, about 70 degree weather. It was upper 80s, humidity was higher, and uh, I, I, I did okay, but I wasn't fully prepared for it. So I would say make sure that you have plenty of water. If you have the ability to have a Campbell back or some type of hydration system that you can attach to your back or your body armor or whatever you decide to run when you're there, by all means do so because you're going to want to drink a lot of water. Make sure that you have a uh, backup of everything that you're going to bring. Uh, obviously, you know, you're gonna bring 1,500 rounds of uh, ammunition for your rifle, and then you're gonna have 250 rounds for your pistol. You're gonna use a lot of that. I'm not gonna say you use all of it, but you will use a lot of it. But when it comes to your kit, right? So if you have mag holsters or a holster for your weapon or uh, a sling, uh, or you know, just a number of different things, make sure that you have uh, an extra uh, of one of those. So what did I bring? I brought my AR pistol and I brought my standard AR with the 16 inch barrel. Both of those are Aero Precisions. I'm a big Aero Precision fan. Uh, so they were the M4E1s. One was an M4E1 pistol, one was a M4E1 carbine. And uh, my pistol worked just fine. I didn't have any issues with it, which uh, to be frankly honest with you, I was somewhat pleasantly surprised because it is a build. I built it myself, so I was very happy to see that I had no issues with it. So, uh, And then I also brought an extra pistol. So I brought my normal Glock 19 with the RMR on it, but I also brought my CZ SP-01 Tactical with me as well. So in case the Glock went down, my CZ was ready to go because that would be more than likely my fallback pistol in a situation where I need a sidearm to back up my rifle, right? So uh, that would be my number two choice. Make sure you have plenty of magazines uh, that you bring out with you. You're required to bring five rifle magazines and then uh, at least three pistol magazines. I would suggest that you bring, if, if you're able to, at least eight magazines. You don't have to have them on you, but if for some reason something happens to one of those magazines, you have the ability to fall back on. And then make sure that you have some type of identifying feature on your magazine as well. Mine, I uh, write Grim on the back of it or on the side of it so that I know that those are mine. I put a little 
coloration on it somewhere. Some people had tape around their magazines uh, or some type of marking on it so they knew that that was their magazine because you're gonna have you're, you're gonna be shooting and you're gonna be moving and magazines are gonna be flying all over the place and uh, when when we're doing the team events. The instructors are going to come in behind you and pick up the magazines and toss them aside so the next group of students can come through. So there's going to be magazines all over the place. So make sure that you have uh, some type of identifying feature on your uh, magazines whenever possible. The final thing that I would say about tactical response is when you're out there, just enjoy the time that you're there. Uh, I'm not saying that you're there to have fun. Uh, you're not on vacation. Uh, training to protect yourself or protect your loved ones shouldn't be a vacation type of mindset. It should be a very serious focused mindset while you're there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have a good time while you're there. There's going to be a lot of time for you to joke and, and cut up and everything, but the, 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 the thing about it is to really kind of connect with a lot of the other individuals that are there to ensure that you are kind of networking and building relationships, not only with the students that are around you, but also with the instructors as well. Because hopefully you will like this course and you will return to Camden, Tennessee to find uh, other courses that they offer as well. Again, all of their courses and dates are going to be on their website, so by all means, swing by and check that out. But with that being said, hey, let's talk to Don Numbers. I got a chance to interview him at the conclusion of day two. Here he is right here. All right, guys, so we just finished up with day two of Fighting Rifle with Tactical Response. I've got Don, the MF <laughs> Armor Numbers right here, uh, one of the instructors today. So uh, for those people who are interested in coming to Tactical response, train with you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, question may be, why fighting rifle? Why fighting rifle? Well, I mean, there's a lot of good trainers out there giving out a lot of good information, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And everybody brings a little something different. We need different types of people to impart different information. But it's always a good thing to come out, come to tax response. Of course, I work here, so I believe what we do is the best, Absolutely. right? Yep. But I'm not saying that there's not other people out there doing good things. But when you get to a certain p amount of training, you get to a point like just taking away one piece of information from a class makes it worth doing, right? Yeah. So why come to Fighting Rifle? Why come to Tactical Response? Well, uh, James has been in business for 20, 23 years now, and like he has fine-tuned this to like the razor's edge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like there is something here for everyone. And like when you come here to Tactical Response and you take a class, any class, like you're becoming something part of uh, something bigger than yourself part of something larger right so why why fighting rifle well one because like if you want to learn how to protect yourself take a pistol class if you want to learn how to protect your country take a rifle class yeah. right so we come out here and like uh we we get down into the dirt like we 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 bound we we fight like we're about fighting we're not here like we'll make you a better shooter from repetition but what we're trying to do is make you a better gunfighter so why fighting rifle because we're going to teach you how to fight with your rifle yep that's why yep. yeah, exactly and if you guys can't see it he's got he's got marks on his uh top here from salt just from all the heat and if you turn around real quick you're going to see all this dirt back here he's getting down as an instructor and showing us exactly what we need to do instead of saying hey knucklehead come over here get down no you're not doing it right he's getting down showing us uh and i, I think that's a, a great mark for an instructor to lead by example right so well james told me a long time ago he was like man there's no quicker way to lose the respect of your students than to not be able to perform the drills that you're asking them to do exactly and by reinforcing that you're able to do those things like it inspires them to also do it right so like they see that we are doing it then they do it they're not just going to look at me and be like yeah right man you can't do that mm -hmm. stuff so why are you asking me to do it like i'm going to try and lead by example not do as i say not as i do absolutely yep yeah and he's excited to do it he, i mean he's got a big smile on his face the entire time and the cr cool thing that i loved about uh you know working with tim and don is the fact that it's non-stop right they, they open up the fire hose and yeah we take breaks but they're still just you know just jamming that information down our throats the entire time so 
that's something I really did appreciate. Well, I don't just want you to perform a task. I want you to understand why we're performing that task. Exactly. You yeah. know, but James will tell you, you know, the quickest way to teach somebody nothing is to teach them everything you know. So it has to pertain directly to the things that you just did in practical application. So, man, I do love it. And yeah. dude, you did a great job. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for coming really out, brother. I really right. enjoyed you in class. All right, so there you guys go, man. You have to get onto Tactical Responses website, sign up for some classes. You will not regret it. It's going to make you a better shooter regardless if you're doing pistol, rifle, uh, what are some of the other courses? We're going to make you a better gunfighter. Yeah, there you go. That's all you need to know. So uh, look them up, tacticalresponses.com, and you will find everything you need to know there. Thanks again, Don. Yeah, Cheers. my pleasure, brother. All Thanks right. for coming out. We'll see you guys you later, too. man. Take care. Bye, y'all. Yep. Get the gun up here and your head will stay up. Okay. You're engrossed, so engrossed in that gun, I could run an elephant by you and you never see it. Okay. Got to train. It is hot. God. Okay. Why did you fire two rounds? I told you one that had to be No. You're fucking this up. <laughs>